Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I have 7 p.m. and uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, it's great to see everyone. I, I always hope we're going to zip through things, but of course it's much more important to have a good discussion of anything that needs to happen. So is there any comment from the public? Okay, hearing none, we have an update from Sarah Campbell. It's so great to see you, Sarah. Good to see everyone. Although actually I only see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so tax bills went out. I guess I first, should first say is that um, Alex handed over mostly everything at the end of May That's to me, out. mostly. And then uh, went on some wild vacation to Alaska. Um, <laughs> so he and I do need to do... Um, an update and I've sent him some questions and when he gets back, we're gonna put our minds together. Um, I guess given what's happened in Rockingham Town Hall, um, I wanna let you know that with aside from two statements that I need Alex's help with, um, the bank statements have been all reconciled for uh, May, June and July. Um, and one of the reasons one bank statement isn't reconciled is simply because um, there's a credit and um, I'm not sure what to, um, I could just um, reconcile it because I know that the credit went in, but um, I prefer to know what it's for before I do that. Okay. And the other one is I have just so many questions for Alex. It's one of the um, sort of sewer ones. Um, Tax bills went out, 95% of tax bills went out last week. Arizona. Um, I didn't send the ones out that I knew the addresses were wrong on. So um, just working to update that. And that's actually not very many. It's about six. Um, rather than spend the 55 cents and get it back, uh, do a little research. Um, Celia did an amazing, Celia Bohannon did an amazing job of getting addresses and Pam Willard from um, Town Hall has been incredibly helpful with that as well. Right. Um, there are a lot of new homeowners in Saxon River and in Rockingham. So that is, um, you know, making sure that the post office, er, that everyone's on the same page. Um, and it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and there are nine bank accounts. Ten, nine or ten. Yeah. Um, I, I remember Alex saying that the learning curve is very steep, um, but that it's possible to master it. And once you master it, um, the stipend is actually not bad. But yeah, he felt after two years of doing it, then he was comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, it's great that you're willing to devote your life to this. I figure we're we're good for 10, right? And I have to say, like, if you get a check-in from someone, it gets accounted for six different ways from Sunday. There right. is no questioning that, that we got that check and we know who's it, who, who it's from. Um, right. I should mention we sent out a whole bunch of, right when Alex took over, um, passed the baton to me, Amy came over and we signed about eight liens so that there are um, an additional eight liens on property within the village. Um, and that um, uh, the we've actually had some payments as a result of those liens. Um, and a couple uh, um, interesting emails because of those liens. <laughs> um, I don't think people understand about compounded interest and its effect on not paying something. And I have to say, Alex, has, like as I was explaining to one person, Alex has been very lenient. So no one should have an issue with what they need to pay. Okay. Questions for Sarah? Uh, yeah, Sarah, with your updated address list. Yeah. Could you um, 
pass that on to me sometime before next year so I can update the sewer database addresses? Yes. Yes, I can. No, no hurry. I've got about 11 months. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And things um, have changed in that month. <laughs> Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, are you going to stick around for most of the meeting, Sarah? I would love to have your feedback on number eight, discussion of the operating manual for yes. basic. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, um, one question that I have is um, from time to time, somebody wants to know the balance in an account. So most recently, someone said to me, hey, how much money is there in that park account? I know you're using that to pay for mowing every week. Is there an obvious way for board members to get that information? Certainly they can email me. And if they don't expect a response within 10 minutes, it, the system could work. Okay. Um, you know, we have, it's, um, the checking accounts are completely up to date. Okay. So, um, you know, I have everything that uh, was put in, you know, for warrants. And like I said, there are only two that aren't re reconciled. And that's literally just, a, you know, a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that information is easily accessible. Okay. You know, it, it gets into more fine tuning of if someone hasn't cashed a check, how much we have, you know, and that, that, sure. but just small things. Yeah. Um, is, could you give me the amount that is in that maintenance? Um, I'm just trying to bring it up. The, if this is a computer from 2012. So, wow. So it doesn't open up quite as quickly as we're used to. And that actually is something to talk about is um, that is going to be an issue. So one of the big training moments for Alex and I was Alex saying, don't update, don't update, don't update. And we're using Quicken, which may not be the best program, but apparently the entire state is gonna get a new program and we maybe wanna be a part of that. Um, so we, we were thinking of going, Alex had been thinking of going to QuickBooks um, but that may not make sense if okay. the entire well, state is going to get something. Uh, come back to us if, um, if you want to discuss further. Yeah. Um, it might be, uh, I know this probably isn't the moment to check with um, other town officials in Rockingham. Oh, no, I would, I would certainly consult with Pam and I don't know who else is there right now. Okay. Um, the business person left, so... I think it's probably Pam to okay. check with. Um, and I can tell you the balance on that account in like one minute. Okay. Not used to computers being this slow. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Carl, I hope you're um, Is that taking... your per personal computer, Sarah? Or is that no, it's the... actually the Village of Saxons River um, Maybe computer. Maybe it's time to upgrade. Yeah, I, it, is, yeah. it is probably... Um, time to upgrade, but I want to wait to see what this, um, you know, what, what they're going to do as a state before we make any decisions mm -hmm. um, for us, because I don't want to spend $700 and then um, have it not work. Mm -hmm. um, but the Quicken is from 2014. So, um, slight, slightly silly. So yeah. the park, actually, Amy, it brings up a good point. The park general account has $6,174.59 in it. Yep. We have another park account that has $500 in it, which was the EPA grant. But the village... That $500 actually belongs um, to the village. Um, and we should just get rid of that $500 account, which hasn't had any action in like two years and put that into the um, village general fund. Alex said he kept meaning to do that and just never got around to it. Um, okay. 
It sounds like you don't need a motion from us. That's a okay. question. Do you need a motion from us? I don't think so. Okay. But I didn't want to do it until I told someone. Motion for what? To move to, to close the tiny, tiny grant um, uh, $500 line and move it back to the village where it belongs. So this is part of the park accounting. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, other questions for Sarah? Okay. Let's march forward then. Um, so review and decision for the paint bids for the Saxons River Fire Station. Um, I put the uh, official bid in the paper and um, I did receive two queries. I sent the bid specifications and I uh, did not um, receive a bid back from either of the two new parties. So we have one bid before us. I believe you all have copies of it. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from uh, Dave Moore. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the bid from Dave Moore to paint the fire station. All in favor, please raise your hand. I see Matt, uh, Ellen, Rick, Amy, and Carl. Thank you, so that's unanimous. Um, I was interested to see that there was some initial resistance on Louise Loring's part. Apparently the fire station is white because it is an historic building. It's the old trolley station. And she and Dave Moore have met over this topic and resolved the issue. It's going to be mostly, it's going to be white where it's historic and red where it's not. Oh, nice. Great. And I, I'm so relieved to have this settled by the conversation of two adults. I <laughs> can't tell you. All right. Uh, so that takes care of that. Um, I don't know if I have that bid. Is it typical for us to... Um, issue an initial payment. Do we have any rule of thumb? Matt, I'm going to look to you on this. Payment to him? Yeah, an initial payment on... Uh, for well, we would, uh, he would uh, bring forward some type of uh, payment schedule. Okay. So we have to, you know, um, have him go a little further with that. So I'll tell him that we have awarded the bid to him and I'll ask him if he would like to give us an initial invoice. Yeah, Sometimes. don't put, don't be pushy about village funds yet. <laughs> Money's just rolling in. Okay, I do have a collection of checks for you. Um, I don't maybe six or seven. Good. Um, well, in so. that information on the the painting bid, it should be noted that it was for five thousand three hundred dollars. Okay. Will the notes show that, Carl? Will the notes show what? I'm sorry. Could the notes please indicate that the bid which we have just moved to pass was for $5,300? Oh yeah, always. Okay, thank Great. you. You're welcome. Okay, um, we are on to discussion of the Rockingham board motion to pay for radar speed signs in Lower Bartonsville. And I, I, had a, I had a question about that. About, about that motion, about that item. Yeah. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure we didn't miss you. So Jean and Gordon, I assume that that might be something that you wanted to um, be here for. Um, so let's start with Matt's question. Why are we dis discussing something that the Rockingham board is doing? The reason for the- it's, it's not village. That's correct. The, the question was, whether uh, the uh, the motion which was passed in Rockingham was to pay for two signs in Bartonsville. Okay. And the question that a Saxons River resident raised was, um, if you're paying for them in Bartonsville, why aren't you treating Saxons River equitably? Right, has anyone approached the board, Rockingham board to request two signs um, in the locations that we're discussing now. I'm going to turn to Gordon for this question. I don't know the answer, Matt. That's that's my answer. Gordon. Uh, that I do not know. <laughs> I don't know whether anyone has requested them to do that. Sorry. So somebody in Lower Bartonsville obviously has requested those. Yeah. 
Um, it, went to the it, board or sent some type of uh, ask for them to be. So I would assume that we need to do the same if we want the, the Rockingham. Uh, so my, my question then, Matt, is does it need to come from us as the trustees or should it come from the citizens? From the from the citizens, I I think either way. I think it's probably both ways would be the best. Really, um, you know, Amy could could write a letter saying that we have, you know, if all our trustees or the majority feel it's important um, that we request uh, signs be purchased for uh, two signs for the locations that we had discussed. And I would say that uh, Saxons River residents, probably those who are in that area would be uh, uh, contacting um, the Rockingham Select Board in the same way, or attending meetings saying, we would like them up here, mm -hmm. so on and so on. So it's, it's slightly more complicated than I've portrayed it. Um, Peter Bergstrom felt that it was a clear violation of the open meeting law for them to make a decision at that level of financial commitment without having warned the item ahead. And the response to that query was they were trying to use up a certain sum of money and they came upon the idea of paying for the Bartonsville signs. So mm -hmm. I don't know where that that inquiry has gone, whether in fact they will bring it up again. I've also heard from one of the select board members, Rick Cohen, who wrote to me to say that he believes the select board is looking for portable sign, in which case it would be for available- lower, For lower Bartonsville? For any place in Rockingham. That was the suggestion. Yeah, though that's well and good, but there needs to be permanent ones up on Westminster Street or whatever it's designated as, Westminster West Road. Rick. I'd like to make a motion that we direct the chair of the Saxons River Village trustees to draft a letter to this citizens group that is working on the sign project to bring to the... Um, Rockingham Select Board and, and request funds supporting our sign. Second. And just a reminder that we raised, Saxons River raised through individual donations and collective donations right. at the store um, for two signs. Mm -hmm. Do we, do we know who donated the funds and we can return them to them if they... Oh, no, these are the signs that were already purchased. Oh, the signs that were yeah. already... So my point being that Saxon River has done, done its bit by providing two of the signs. And yes, we do know who donated for them, but... Well, I, no, um, I think we started collecting funds for right. more. Yes. If, if, so, cover, if the town will cover them, then we could... Re turn any yes. funds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think I think what you just said about that Saxons River raised and money and aid to have installed two that it that it's un, not unreasonable for the town to, to buy the other two. Um Matt, maybe you remember this. My impression was that when we got the other two signs that Vincent contacted the town and the town had said no they wouldn't fund that. Am I remembering correctly? Um, yeah, I vaguely recall something of that, but I can't, I can't say for sure. Um, yeah. it, I don't, think, I always I don't think anyone on the board had requested it. Um, it might have been just uh, someone no, who had the citizen request, probably. Yeah. I tell my kid no all the time, and he keeps coming back and asking. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, there, and there are funds for a lot of different things out there right now. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So um, my understanding of your motion, Rick, is that I am to write to the citizens group to ask them to request funds from the select board. Is that the gist of what you requested? Um, to, to draft a letter that would be ultimately delivered to the select board on behalf of the, a letter stating the trustees support of 
a request for funds from the the town to place signs, whether the whether it's addressed, whoever it's addressed to, I guess. Well, I think if if Amy is going to be doing it as the chairperson for the village trustees, um, that it should go be addressed to and delivered to uh, the Rockingham board and not to the citizens group to deliver for us. More discussion on that idea? Gordon, how do you feel about it? Well, I think, you know, I think that the letter will be effective, especially if we know the numbers, you know, and I can't, I don't know, you know, Peter would know maybe where we are at, yet, but in terms of the traffic study, just exactly how many cars actually pass through, uh, vehicles anyway, who pass through there. Um, I think that would be crucial in terms of being able to convince the Rockingham board to, to support it. You know. I so was, go ahead. One of the things we did when we were raising money for the other signs to make sure that we weren't just imagining that cars were going super fast on Main Street was <laughs> um, we asked the Wyndham County Sheriff to, um, I asked Keith Clark, but I realize that um, Sheriff Anderson is there now, but he helped, actually, uh, when he was Deputy Anderson, he helped us out a great deal. So they put the, the sheriff one um, on Main Street and then we're able to give, like, yes, this is really happening, the statistics. Well, that, that records all the numbers? Is that what you're yes. saying? So yeah. then it was it, I don't think it records exactly like a car is going 19, but they have like, there are 40 cars going over 20. There are, you know, 40 cars so, going. So that would be very helpful. Yeah. I would, I would also maybe suggest if someone wants to take it on up there that uh, you get a petition and go to the, all the neighbors up there that don't care for the gar cars speeding and follow, follow the letter from Amy. So the more they hear that, you know, this needs to happen, then they, they be more uh, apt to take action on it. And we had all discussed in the past too about maybe one up on Pleasant Valley Road, correct? Yes, oh, that no, did come definitely up. definitely not. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, because being yes. at the start of Pleasant Valley Road before the rec area, <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's like people get a running start coming off 121 yeah. Up, yeah. up the hill. So I would like to see something on Pleasant Valley Road before the wreck, before mm -hmm. Court Hill. Yeah. So um, I have the sense then that my letter should refer to three signs, three radar signs. I, that would be. Ask for three, although, get two. Although I, yeah, although I, I support the, the Pleasant Valley Road thing, I, I think that just ramping it up more and more um, could be, I, mean, well, I hate to have the, the first two would be great to have. And if we could follow up with another one or two on Pleasant Valley Road, maybe, you know, later mm -hmm. on, you know, just so we're not, we don't seem like we're under there had been some discussion about about even just getting one for um, Westminster Street as you're going up the hill, and do we want to request one for there and one for Pleasant Valley? I mean, I think I, as somebody who walks up down there on occasion, I, the cars coming on Westminster West Road are flying from both directions. So, how are they going that fast with that corner? They come around the corner. And <laughs> they come around there fast. <laughs> They're coming up the hill fast. Yeah. They're coming up the hill fast. Well, when they, when they turn that corner by your house, Carl, I've been out there on the street, and they come around that corner, and then they hit that straight away and just... Um, they're, 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 they're practically on two wheels going around the corner, it seems. Which means that they're going fast through the trailer park. That's right. Yep. Fast which is only 25. Yeah. The hill and around the well, corner. 25. And then you've got them coming down Hartley Hill Road. Fast too, which is only going to get worse because they just finished repaving that today. Yeah. So, um, I, I, well, I, I would suggest we stick with the two in those locations and okay. so that we're not jumping all over the place to. Well, um, and maybe go not a little bit on each road. Let's let's 
try and get two there. And, and like I said, with a, a letter from Amy and then maybe citizens up there uh, get a petition and signatures and uh, you need and to raise keep some money. Well, yeah, it, it needs to be out there and, and talked about and, and it should happen. I, I would suggest that we not be too specific about the locations we, we request the signs for. Um, I think if we just request signs to control speed in both directions, we can take some time to decide where we need to put them. Whether one needs to go down at the bottom of the hill by the trailer park, whether it needs to go up on and just control the speed on Westminster Street. Right? Because I know that some of the people who are interested um, are more concerned about the West West Road than they are about Westminster Street because that's where they walk. So I, I think we should be kind of general in our requests for two signs to control to control traffic through the south end of the village. And, and yeah, so I, I, I disagree on that. They, you know, they want to know that they're not going on school street or, or river street or you know something that just does not need a sign i think we need to say there's an issue here and follow it up we have like extension we need one if and we, we couldn't if we put them in a little different location that's one thing but i think it should be specified that they can't do one. it's not like they're going to pay for it. they're going to buy them and purchase them and 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 just put them up the uh, without uh, talking with us about it. So what locations are we asking for then? Well, hold on a second. I, Ellen, I think you, you were ready to speak. So let's do you first. Well, all I was gonna say is, I mean, if we could get two, can't we share? Put one up on what Pleasant Valley Road, <laughs> one up on West we'll, West we'll, Road. We'll work on yours next year. I, I think that's, yeah. Personally, I think that's not the way to go about it because the cars are going fast in both directions there. And just like we have them in two directions on, on Main Street on 121, I think you need to put one coming in and one going out. If you just put one, they're going to come from Westminster West um, from the trailer park and fly down through there. So that's just my opinion. And by the way, it doesn't stop traffic. It, it, it's a reminder, it's, um, it's like a good lock on a house door. It keeps honest people honest. It doesn't stop teenagers from, you know, the current signs we have doesn't stop dump trucks from going through at 40 and doesn't stop teenagers going through at 70. Mm -hmm. It does slow. Yes, ahead, it, yeah, some of them. <laughs> Um, Carl, could you read back the original motion, please? This was Rick's motion, um, which original, Matt seconded. The original motion was um, that you should draft the letter to the citizens group uh, requesting them to contact the Rockingham Select Board to request funds for radar speed signs on Westminster Street. So I will amend my motion to say a that we direct the chair to draft a letter to the Rockingham Select Board requesting two funding for two speed signs on West Minute between from the somewhere between the bridge and the trailer park. I'm not so, sure Westminster Street and Westminster West Road really change. So I would just call it West West Road. So um, if we accept that friendly amendment, Matt, are you willing to second it? Oh, absolutely. As it was written? Okay. As, so, as, as it's been amended. As it's been amended. So yeah. that's by friendly amendment. Um, there's, there's one other thing I wanted to say, which is that we, are also, we haven't talked about the fact that when you reach the end of before you turn onto what the Westminster Road, you're in a three, you have three roads coming in, you know, and I know that if, if you are going to go straight, I mean, it, it can be very tricky in terms of you, 
a lot of people who may not know that there are three roads there. They have to, you have to be very careful because cars are coming from Westminster, they're coming from Saxons River, and they're coming down Hartley Hill, you know, and um, especially people who don't know can, you know, that may think they may think they can just go zooming right up Hartley Hill Road. Um, so that's another complication that we have never talked about, but um, it, maybe a sign would help with that also. More comments on the resolution, uh, the, the motion that we have on the floor. Uh, does anyone want to change the two signs for Westminster Street? Or would you like to leave that? I mean, I, I heard the sentiment that it should just be two oh, we, signs. We have a motion and we have a second. Yeah, I just okay. want to make sure that, that we're, we're where we want to be before we vote. All right, we have a motion and a second directing the chair to draft a letter to the select to the Rockingham Select Board asking for funds for two speed signs on Westminster Street between the bridge and the trailer park. All in favor, raise your hand. It's unanimous and so there are no objections. Okay, thank you. Gordon, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, you know, in terms of petitions, you know, since we had that little <laughs> gathering, maybe we could, maybe we could come up with, but you know, you, you were, weren't you in fact, Amy, uh, getting names and phone numbers and email pe of people who live up here? I actually don't have a list of names and phone numbers. So for those of you unlucky enough not to live in the upper village, we had a block party about a week ago. Um, just a potluck, dead end, um, <laughs> delightful. The one good day of the week. I don't know how we pulled that off. <laughs> but I, I, do, I do not have um, a list of emails and phone numbers. I mean, there were four people who invited mm -hmm. everybody. So between the four of us, we might. Um, but I, I don't... I. I think what I've been doing is sending people to you, Gordon, when anybody asks me who's in charge of such a petition. Matt. Um, if I can be so bold as to suggest a good old fashioned door to door with a, uh, with a clipboard and a, mm -hmm. a signature in that area, I would assume everyone living up in that area, whether it's on the side street or the main street, is going to support putting uh, signs on there. Gordon, if I um, gave you a copy of... I'll, I'll volunteer to do that. Okay, so I will give you a copy of what I've written in short form to the select board. And if you want to take it out and see if people would like to sign it, that I'm sure would add a great deal of um, power. Okay. Okay. I'll do, I'll do it. And you can put one um, at the store too. I mean, I would assume... I would sign one. I don't obviously live on that street, but I support it. So I'm a village uh, resident. I would assume other village residents would sign it. Well, that raises the question of um, should it be all available for all village residents? Yeah. I mean, sure. I'm, just it, say, I'm just saying initially go to that everyone up there and knock on the door and say, hey, do you want to yeah. support this or not? And put a copy of it at the store. Okay. Well, isn't didn't you say Peter Bertram is leading um, a group? Couldn't they all go to door to door? I don't know um, what role Peter Bergstrom is playing in this, uh, uh, except uh, for uh, that he was concerned about the open meeting violation. I haven't I haven't heard either. I I know Colin. Um, so I don't know. Okay, I'm going to move on unless there are other questions. Um, so we are on number six, committee to review sewer fees and billing cycle in the coming year. I think this was Carl's suggestion that we should put together such a committee. Um, and, and what's the purpose for that? Well, there was some discussion about um, whether or not we were getting good data for setting the sewer fees from VA in the school. And this was your question, actually. And whether, and then also whether it would make more sense to set set fees or billing 
quarterly or semi-annually rather than annually. Mm -hmm. um, so my contact uh, following up with VA, it probably would make more sense to um, calculate their rate uh, closer to the start of their fall term. They don't seem to change much in enrollment between uh, or, or during the year, but things might change by 10, 15 students um, between the time uh, they collect their numbers in the spring and the time classes start in the fall. So if our, if our bills went out, uh, say, two months or a month later than they do now, be closer to the time when the academic year starts and closer to the time where we could set the bill with good numbers. But if we're going to be trying to collect the data closer to the start of their year, it makes sense for the billing period to be at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that we're not trying to, trying to alter things in mid right. Right. Um, And then there's also sort of a question of maybe we need to sit back and think about how we're calculating the sewer rate. You know, we're, we're using the, um, 2007, I think it is, a formula that the state had for um, sizing septic systems as a guideline for how we apportion um, fees to businesses and residents. And maybe it's time to take a look and see if there's a better way to do it, or a more equitable way to do it. So I was suggesting that if we want to think about making some changes, um, it would be good to start now. And um, Ben Wallace is willing to, to sit in and give some input on that if we decide we want to do it. Um, I'm willing to do it. And anybody else who wants to bang their against the sewer issue is welcome to join. Um, so if it's a subcommittee of the board, you'll need to do uh, the open meeting warnings, minutes, and posts, Carl. You're aware of that, I'm sure. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, do you want citizen, other citizen Im involvement? Um, I don't, um, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. I would like it not to be a um, large group of people who come and go. Okay. Uh, just because my experience in sitting in on a few of the fire committee meetings was that mm -hmm. people would come in and go out and um, all of a sudden the direction of things would change depending on who was sitting there. So I would like it to be people who are willing to put some time into it. Okay. Do you I have a deadline in mind, a time by which you um, hope that you and Ben can finish this study and bring back recommendations to the full board? I think that it would be nice if we're thinking of changing the billing um, or, uh, in any major way to be able to have this ready by the village annual meeting. I don't know okay. if that's realistic, but I think that would be a good time to bring it forward. Okay, so can we ask you to have that by March then? Well, you can ask me anything. <laughs> uh, no, wait. When do we have to have, does anybody know when? <laughs> when do we have to have the warning together for the annual meeting? Is it 40 days before the meeting? I have a feeling that might be it. I'll look that up. Um, but so I think if we say spring. Beginning of, beginning of March. Yes, yeah, spring. Okay. So and that's then, your deadline. Yeah. And we might want to, um, we might want to, uh, solicit some input from Vermont Academy on this if we're thinking of changing the billing cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who we would ask. Vanessa. Now, Vanessa maybe, hasn't worked there for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I um, think that's a great idea. Um, and I, you know, you, you could go to the um, person in charge uh, is it Jennifer Zaccaro mm -hmm. and ask for a recommendation um, who would who would have a good sense of the schedule and flow of the, the um, hiring of faculty and decisions around students. I would not go to her in September. I would wait till October or November when presumably things are a little bit 
Sarah has information. I can tell by her hand. She would not be the person to go to. There is a chief financial officer and he would be, he or she would be the person. And they start Jeff Seaton, who was the chief financial officer left, left as of July 1st. And the new one be, be, uh, starts work, I believe, August 1st. Do you, do you know who the new one will be? Um, I do, and I have completely forgotten their name. Okay. I got a thing about it. Um, but but that was, Jennifer is not. And what okay. I, would, I know from talking to um, Jeff last year, when we, were all, when we were all sort of going, oh, my God. Um, I think for commercial entities, the Village Market, the Inn, Dave Moore, Moore's Inn, um, Vermont Academy, I don't know who else would that would be effective. I think more than when we bill, it's being able to pay uh, quarterly payments mm -hmm. as opposed to um, paying one payment. Mm -hmm. I truly feel that that's the much bigger issue. Mm -hmm. So we gave you the authority to make those decisions at our last meeting, Sarah. Oh, excellent. Done. If you look at our minutes, you'll see it there. Okay. I skimmed. It's okay. Oh, we forgot to tell you. <laughs> you forgot. Sorry, like the email. <laughs> okay. So, um, Carl, what else do you need from us? Well, nothing. If you'll, um, I guess, just let me... Um, I could approach either the uh, the new CFO or um, I could talk to Chris Cota, who's the trust a trustee involved with mm -hmm. with these numbers and and um, uh, ask him to put me in touch with somebody. Keep uh, in mind that Vermont Academy no longer pays real estate taxes, so um, they do pay a tremendous amount of the sewer bill. Yes. Mm -hmm. But to keep in mind, and uh, something that I was going to bring up at some point is about putting them on a pilot program, uh, which is pay in lieu of taxes. The government sort of saying like, okay, you're not because you're a nonprofit. So they paid until I think 2015 real estate taxes on about six houses in Saxons River. That was an agreement that was made in 1947. Jeff very wisely, you know, uh, figured out that it was a tremendous cost when you incorporated Rockingham town taxes into it. And um, some things had changed. And so he was able to take the um, buildings off the tax roll. Um, so our goal should not to be to have Vermont Academy pay as little as possible. We want to support the school because they're a huge part of our community. Um, but just keep in mind, because a lot of people are still under the misapprehension that Vermont Academy pays uh, taxes in a different way other than sewer. Well, yeah, my, my um, concern is not to minimize taxes for Vermont or sewer fees for VA, but to make sure that the billing is equitable. Um, and it, it may be that we don't find a different way to do it, a better way to do it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, because we're going through convolutions because we don't actually monitor inflow or, or outflow. Um, and we've been doing the same way without really examining it for a while, I think it's probably a good time that we should do that. Yeah, and the pandemic has proved that the inn was closed, Dave Moore didn't have any house guests, Vermont Academy was all but closed, no dining hall, no nothing, and usage went up um, at the, uh, where they do keep track, which is um, at the, with um, Rob Wheeler. Because everybody stayed home. Exactly. Yeah. But but an interesting, those three, those entities are still going to be billed the highest. Okay, um, Carl, come back to us if you feel like you need more guidance. Um, it would be nice to have an interim report sometime between, you know, after, after a couple of meetings, maybe. But we'll leave that up to you. Uh, are any of the other trustees interested? 
in doing this? No. <laughs> I don't have the time. Sorry. Rick Rowell, are you interested? And that's just an invitation. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to draft you. I just wondered if you're interested. At this point, unfortunately, I'll have to pass. Okay. I mean, I sort of inherited this from Ben, so I don't mind taking it on. Um, we'll find something else for you to take on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have <laughs> so as you, as you start to study this, you know, you may decide that there's some area of expertise or uh, politics or chemistry that you really need help with, Carl. Come back with us if that's the case, and we'll try and be of use to you. Well, okay. I do have a procedural question for you. Okay. So if this is a subcommittee of the board, but we're having resident involvement, i.e. Ben, please, um, is there a mechanism I should use to solicit interest or just put it in the minutes? I would say, well, you, you kind of noted that you didn't want a, a lot of people jumping in and out. Um, if you, if I would just say, put it in the minutes. If and if people are interested, um, if you want to go and solicit some people, then be ready for it. Yeah, I mean, my um, my inclination would be uh, if there's somebody with a particular interest or a particular expertise to ask them. Yeah, um, I think that's the most effective way to get good people on your committee. Think I, about I specific skills that you're looking for and then ask. I just don't want to be violating any um, open meeting law or, or anything like that. No, I think you're okay on that. All right. Thank you. Um, and remember that, you know, if you have, um, you, you are the only trustee um, on that committee. You do not have a quorum of the board. So you're going to come back with recommendations, but we would need board action on them in order to make anything explicit. You know, I don't, you know, in order, and, and you were thinking that you would bring it back for the annual meeting at any rate. So, but I just want to caution you on that. So let us say that you get two more people so you have a committee of four. So your quorum is two uh, or three, three probably. It's easier with an uneven number. Um, but your the things that you pass still need to come back to this board for approval. Okay. So you're not giving me unlimited power. You do not have <laughs> unlimited power. Thank you for wording it so carefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm happy to brainstorm with you about who else might be good um, if if you decide you need that help. But I think I think you probably know more people than I do. You you between you and Ben, you'll find good people if you decide you want more. Okay, number seven, committee to study contracts with local enforcement in coming year. Rick, we're going to put you on the spot. Do you want to talk about that? I think this came from your thoughts. Yeah, this was just, uh, you know, we we signed the contract with the with the sheriff's department last week. And, you know, one of the questions even before on the trustees that I often heard from people was, what are we getting for what we pay for? Mm. Um, and so just, you know, uh, 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 I think that I just I feel like it's time to evaluate that service that we're getting. Um you know, with a few things that have come before the board recently, things like a noise ordinance and perhaps even, mm -hmm. and how would we enforce such a thing? We're like, right now we, you know, we never know if, when, or where the sheriff is going to be, which is a positive, but we also never know if, you know, rarely know if or when they are even around. And I think that we should, I think that we should just evaluate if we're getting, if we are, make sure we're getting what we're paying for. And if we're not, look at how do we get what we pay for? So in, in the past, we contracted with, when I got on the board, I think it was with Wyndham County. And then we switched to the state police. And then the state police said, we're not doing that anymore. And we went back to Wyndham County Sheriff's. Um, Basically, we contracted them to cover the the summer months, um, evenings, not to come in and do speed control, but 
um, because we're not contracting for a large amount of money. We're not contracting for 40 hours a week. Um, there was just a set amount to come in at random times to kind of help uh, with unruliness and vandalism. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't published. They're going to be here, you know, Tuesday evenings, you know, between 1030 and 12. They kind of came through when they came through. So I don't um, know if you want to go be more specific or spend more money on it, but that's, that's what we've done. And that's basically what this agreement is. Yeah, well, when I read through it, it, it did specify like an average number of hours per week. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess my question is, my question was, are we actually getting those numbers of hours per week? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can I can send you those reports routinely. I can make that one thing that I, whenever the report comes in, I can scan it and include it in the documents I send out to everyone, or I can provide those documents to the study committee, whichever you prefer. Typically, I'm the one picking up the mail and opening and, you know, bringing before you. And and I, I'm happy to be a committee of one and just review those reports and summarize them for the board on a quarterly basis or something so that next awesome. next year we've got a, you know, we when, when, the, when it comes time to come to to sign the contract, we're better, or whoever's on the board at that time is better informed. Um, great. Thanks, Rick. Sorry. Thanks. That sounds great. But that's all. That's all I'm really interested in is being better informed about, like you know, you know, I'll reread the contract again and just make you know, and and just being better informed about what's going on and what we're you know what we're what are we getting and what are we paying for, so that it's it's more clear when questions do come up as to, you know. Speeding, graffiti, vandalism, noise on, you know, there's just, there's, mm -hmm. there's a number of things that. I support that. Um, okay. So um, for a couple, just to follow up with that for a couple of years, I was kind of the liaison between one of the deputies that was covering here and he would call and ask about stuff and I would call him and, you know, say, hey, there's a lot of cars speeding or, you know, just random information so that they could better gauge, you know, what was going on. Um, you know, I think I called once and said, you know, the village market was uh, broken into. No, I hadn't heard that one. You know, because what happens is the state police gets called, you know, with some, something like that and they don't know about it. So, Yeah. So are you, are you volunteering to continue to be the liaison? The no, I thought I heard you just picked that up. So you wanted more, you wanted in on it. So um, either way, but um, you could find out who to contact, you know, and just give, you know, when you hear from residents, oh, there's a lot of speeding at this time of night or squealing tires or, you know, such things. Um, giving them that information will probably help them and when it's the best time for them to be in town. Um, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> we had a, uh, a deputy, Deputy Lakin, who uh, sat right. in on a couple of our meetings and this was going to be a regular thing, but it kind of petered out. But uh, you might, that might be something you want to follow up on if you're contacting the, the sheriff. Sit in on our board meetings or I don't know if there's a, a regular mechanism for sending in concerns. I think Rick's our mechanism. I think this sounds great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I would be happy to have him participate in our meetings, but I'm assuming that that would come out of our budget of, of hours that we spend right. with them. So I would rather one of us communicating with them what our concerns and needs are as opposed, you know, as opposed to ha having them spend that time in the meeting, you know, maybe quarterly or something, they could come and it wouldn't hurt to have their cruiser sitting outside here for an hour or so while we have a meeting. But I don't, I think having them attend each meeting is, is overkill yeah. for. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right. Any, any uh, more discussion on that idea? Okay. Just one question for Matt. Yep. Is that, um, I don't remember, I, I looked at the contract, but I don't remember that it said um, anything about an emphasis on evenings and um, summer months. 
I'm just wondering, was that in the written contract or was that just an understanding that we had? Well, I think that uh, was more of an understanding. Okay. Uh, you know, because why would you need to be roaming around, you know, 12 o'clock uh, in January when it's, uh, you know, 10 below zero? Yeah. You know, it, it seemed to be more that, uh, you know, kids out and about and uh, vandalism and, you know, was happening when school was getting out and through the summer. Um, so that's in the past when we've we've asked for the coverage to happen. Um, so. um, maybe um, Matt and Carl know the answer to this. Who polices the parked cars during snowplow season? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Sarah. I know sometimes that's an issue. Parked <laughs> cars on Main Street. Like yeah, it is. Pretty much myself through. in April. And, and oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Vigilante. Yeah, <laughs> I guess nobody really wants to touch that one is what I've heard from. I, you know, I, I mean, personally called Peter Stam this winter because there is, you know, two houses um, that have issues on Main Street. Yep. And the plow guys were really upset. So I personally, I'm not touching one of the addresses with a 10 foot pole, but I personally called Peter Stam. He, um, no, I called Louise. Louise um, emailed Peter Stam, copied me on it. And then I called at one point, Peter and I spoke in the street. Two years ago, I called Peter Stam about this issue. This is not a, an old issue. He doesn't pay to have the parking lot plowed behind the Calvin house. <laughs> um, but he knew, he said he knew it was a problem and he would take care of it. And that didn't happen. So is that a village ordinance or a, a town thing about the parking? I think it's I'm getting ready to write tickets just on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer have, to that. Can we deputize you? We oddly enough had um, somebody, because I spoke to them in with a New York plate who was parking. I don't know where they came from, but they said when I sort of I won't use the word of cost when I gently approached them and said, can I, can I ask why you park here every um, snowstorm and where you come from? And he wouldn't tell me where he came from, but he came from a driveway somewhere sort of in Saxons river where the landlord made him not have his car there during a snowstorm. <laughs> and I said to him, you know, the tickets here are really expensive. If I kept, you know, and um, then he didn't do it the next time. Mm. It's like two hundred dollars. Oh, it is that much. Yeah. Yeah. What I decided that day, <laughs> Ellen, was that it was two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he was renting an Airbnb somewhere in Saxons River, and they said when it snows, and it snowed a fair amount, to move your car, and to put. And the, I'm sure they told him to put it on Main Street. <laughs> you know, so their plow guy could get in. Mm -hmm. So there was a factual question answered and asked, and I didn't hear the answer. Is this a Rockingham ordinance or a Saxons River Village ordinance parking during a snowstorm? Anybody know the answer to that? I believe it's a town ordinance. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. You'd have to look into it to verify that, but that's my understanding. I can look into it. Ellen will look into this and report. And Carl, there would be a good... Uh, place for Ellen, she could be, you know, uh, parking, parking uh, control, uh, winter months on Main Street. I, oh, God, I no. think that's all right. End up tickets. Right? Put the boot on. Do you have a tow truck in some place you could hold them, Ellen? <laughs> they do. They have the trucks. Yeah, I can put it up onto one of our trailers and hold it. <laughs> <Yeah. my house. laughs> Oh my gosh. We can park it next to the market with the other cars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready to move on to a new item? Yes. A discussion of an operating manual for basic board functions like taxes. Okay. So, Carl, I think we're back to you. I believe you, you mentioned this. So I got an, I got an email uh, from the cashier town cashier saying, you know, this tax rate that you gave us is going to bring you up $170 short. Um, 
of what you want to raise. And I said, huh? <laughs> and, uh, um, well, it turns out that, um, for, for example, the, um, the grand list value does change every year, although I was told that it doesn't, um, and that there's a form that gets sent out that tells you what the new grand list value is, which I had no idea of. And it just, it seemed to me that for a lot of these tasks, um, taxes, the sewers, there's some pretty complicated procedures that are more in people's memory than written down. And it would be nice as we discover things like this to have a record made of them and accessible someplace. Mm -hmm. And I use the word operating manual loosely. I wasn't thinking of a um, an actual book, but maybe just a list of procedures or documents about taxes, about the sewer fees mm -hmm. that we could put up on the um, say the clerk's Google Drive um, and make accessible to everybody on the board. Um, now, Amy had su suggested an email, something about a calendar. Um, we do was, have a calendar, um, which I have not reproduced. Um, Louise did it annually. And it says things like, you know, begin preparing for the annual meeting here. Uh, calculate sewer taxes here, but it does not go to the level of detail that you're talking about, Carl. And I, I think you're right. It's very valuable. So um, I don't have any great ideas about format or um, how to do it, but I just think it would be a, a good idea for us to have. I and think this would be a good job for Ellen. I was just going to say, I think I could do this. Like a, 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 you know, a lot of the other boards that I've been on, you actually get like, you know, a, a, an onboarding manual where, you know, it explains like your responsibilities, your, the expectations, the, the basic rules and guidelines of, you know, um, I think that most people who end up on this board are, are aware of things like quorums and rights, but I know Ellen is fairly new to the boards, had lots of questions when she came on. And yeah, because I keep asking Rick at work. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're asking questions, but I think it would be even more helpful if you ask them in board meetings, because many of us haven't, you know, come to grips with some of these things. But if you're oh, well, willing to take that on, I think that would be wonderful. Um, please remember, all of you, that Louise gave me... Um, three full boxes and two um, uh, and one filing cabinet with materials in them. Um, I dip in there at least once a week trying to figure something out. Um, uh, and I am very willing to share that material either by scanning it or by having you come and borrow things. The um, The box on the Saxons River Park has been unusually active. Uh, obviously, we're coming to grips now that we've had the park for a couple of years and we're seeing what we need to do with it. That's been really valuable for people to dig in and actually read through. And inevitably, what I hear when people bring the material back is, wow, the trustees have worked so hard on these issues. And not just the trustees, people like Celia Bohannon. Um, people like Abigail Gold, um, real effort has been put into making this village the um, nice place to live that it is. So just, just remember, Ellen, I'm going to start sending you some files, not tonight and not tomorrow, but in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I'll look to you for um, more questions. You know, sure. I, I think I'll give you the bylaws and the calendar at least to start with. But I, I like um, Rick's suggestion that maybe we need an onboarding kind of manual for anybody who's new. Um, we, this might be the time to mention also that we are a member in good standing of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And that means we can call on them for assistance. Um, they have a good website. I think it's vlct.org, um, and they have many smart people who work for them. So, for example, our insurance with League of Cities and Towns, um, our, our workman's comp, it's, it's um, we generate it. You know, it is member-issued insurance. So instead of it being about 
Fidelity making a buck. It is about members covering expenses and knowing how to do that properly. So thank you, Ellen. Yeah, Anything well else? Okay. Ellen. Uh, committee reports and updates. Could, could I go back a second? So Ellen, do you want me to send you the out from the town about all the forms and details we need to request for like the tax information? The... Um, I didn't hear the beginning of that. Okay. That really so um, I discovered that there's a, there's a form that updates the um, brand list every year. Oh, for, okay. For taxes. And there's probably some arcane formula for calculating your tax rate every year because it doesn't seem, the numbers don't seem to balance from what the cashier told me. So when I find out what those things are, do you want me to just pass them on to you or what I collect yeah. you can put it into your manual? Yeah, I think that would be great. So okay. yes. I just want to know where to send it. Send I, it I'm all fine with just knowing it for myself, but eventually I will retire or die or something. <laughs> and, um, oh. Somebody yeah. else should, should uh, be able to pick it up a little bit more easily. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Anything else on the um, manual? Okay. Committee reports and updates. Wastewater treatment plant. Um, Rob came by and I signed the um, um, testing requirements once, once a week. He emails me or texts me and we get together and I officially sign things as the chair of the committee. The um, equipment that he asked us to approve for water softener, um, that is in gear, um, but um, it isn't installed yet. So he'll let me know when we have an update on that. Um, are there any questions on the wastewater treatment plant? And this reminds me that I have not followed up with Kevin and the key. So I apologize to you all for that. Um, I have no update on the uh, key, but I will make that happen. Any questions on the wastewater treatment plant? No. Okay. Fire station. Nothing to report at this time. Okay. Are we still technically looking for design bids, Matt? Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think that's, that's definitely the route we should go, but given the um, given the price of everything right now, especially yeah. building materials, I'm just wondering if it's uh, if it's better. And the fact that every commercial building contractor out there is right out straight, I'm just wondering if we should hold off a little bit um, before going down that road, just so we don't. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm hesitant to 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 go too far with it right now because of the cost. Um, so but if if you if the board wants to push forward with it, then then we can go through that process. I think we maybe need um, a ten minute um, summary and uh, previous to it an opportunity to study what's happened. So maybe I should put that on the list for a forthcoming meeting. It just occurs to me that we have new board members who are not up to speed on what we're currently looking for, agreed that you know we're not we're not doing anything at the moment. But how would you feel about preparing something like that, Matt? Just a short um, review, what's been happening in the last two years, perhaps? Yeah, sure. We can we can do that. And as far yep. as and then uh, up to up to date as far as where we are with, um, yep, sure. Um, September maybe. Typically, we have one meeting in August. Am I right? Right. September. That's fine. So, if you will um, either submit materials to everyone yourself or submit them to me and I'll stick them in with a warrant when we're ready for our September meeting, then people can review them ahead of time. Um, maybe just a simple timeline of what's happened. Sure. Okay, great. 
and the Saxons River Park. So I did send you, I believe, a very informal report from the committee that met. Did everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was wowed. I mean, I think this committee is doing a lot of work and I'm so grateful that they are asking the questions about liability, usage, um, sewer, uh, not sewer fees, park fees. Um, apparently the group was unanimous with the thought that there should be a fee charged for using the, uh, the park, which surprised me. Sarah's nodding vigorously. Really? <laughs> Well, Sarah, there is a group there if you want to join. Um, no, I can just agree with them. Um, okay. Yes, you diminish something um, by not uh, charging a fee for it, and then you can make a decision if it's a nonprofit or Fourth of July or whatever. But if you having if you're having a wedding there, you know, um, people are paying enormous amounts for spaces to be married, and it has a value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. more importantly. And we pay for the, the mowing and, you know, the federal government has paid an enormous sum to do this. And we have paid for the plantings. And then there'll be, if they really rent it out, there'll be a cost for cleanup. Yeah. Um, so I did not send to you the zip file. Um, I think that the chair of the group, Margaret Vandenberg, researched a number of application forms for similar small parks. Not all small, actually. I think I think uh, she included one from Trenton. I assume that's Trenton, New Jersey, which was very elaborate. But just to give the pe people the feel for the parameters, you know, what what other places ask, and um, then. What, what this committee might decide. So I look forward to a report from them at some point, um, but they are not an official committee of this board. I remind you of that. So um, they are pretty much off on their own, but coming back to us um, for guidance. Um, any questions on any of those things, the wastewater treatment plant, the fire station, or the Saxons River Village Park? Saxons so, River Park, excuse me. So for the for the park, if they do start to charge a fee or or formalize any of that, then that will need to come back to us for approval, and then yes. and we'll have to allocate funds into the appropriate accounts for the park, which could then cover things like the mowing and maintenance and, and mm -hmm. et cetera going forward. I yep. just want to make sure that's clear. Yep, um, I think I should probably. Um, tell you that one of their thoughts was they would prefer not to have a unique website that they kept up for the park. Um, and it seemed to me that we might be able to host an application if they come up with one on the um, on our town website. Do you have any feeling about that, Carl? You're the person who works most closely with that town website. Um, I don't think that there would be a, a, a difficulty with that. Um, that's kind of above and beyond what um, the, the town had in mind that we might do with it. But I've snuck some other things in there and there's been no objection. So um, <laughs> I think that, I, I don't see any reason why we should be limited to uh, things like minutes and agendas. And um, I figured out how to make the other documents accessible. So yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right, anything else? Um, we are up to minutes for approval from July 5th, 2021. Are there um, questions or discussion of the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Rick has made the motion to approve the minutes of July 5th and Matt has seconded. All in favor, show by your hand. It's unanimous, Carl. Okay, warrants and bills for approval. Um, so I have a new um, warrant for you. Um, Sarah very properly submitted invoices for the payment of um, the village treasurer and the um, village treasurer for the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, that's right, my mouse is not working. That's why it won't do that. Thank you. 
So you should be seeing the um, updated um, bill. So this bill reflects on line 17, 18, and 19. Two additional payments from the warrant I sent you the other night. Um, the treasurer position for six months at $312.50. The treasurer position for the wastewater treatment plant for six months at $312.50. And the village clerk position at $325. So those are invoices that I've just received, but all of them are dated the 21st. I believe everything else on that warrant came to you earlier, and the new total is $19,283.81. Are there any questions on those items or any items on the warrant? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. No. Did you write down that figure, Carl? 19, yeah. And 17 invoices. All right. Do I hear a motion? I move we approve the warrant for 17 invoices for a total of $19,283.81. Is there a second? Second. Ellen Clark Lawrence seconds that motion. It's been moved and seconded to approve the warrant of 17 invoices and the total amount of $19,283.81. Um, I should point out to you that the big items in that are two, one for manhole covers and one for the work of raising the manhole covers. We had discussed earlier taking those funds from the capital fund. Um, I can go back and get you the minutes for that if you need it, Sarah. This is a decision that predates this board. Um, so it happened before April. Um, it's, a, it's a large amount. So yeah. that was our. Okay. I'm just gl gl glad it's coming out of the general fund. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> All right. It's been moved and seconded. 17 invoices, $19,283.81. Are, are those the manhole covers that Rob bought that then were getting returned? Or are these? It's two manhole covers that we had to purchase to replace the ones that we used from Rockingham. We originally thought we might meet, need as many as six, 20. We didn't really uh, know. It's yeah. actually only two. How much was it for the two? Hold on, let me get it it's back. It's 28 something. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I had to, it, was the, it was separate above the other one. Yeah, the, the big thousand. item is for raising the manhole yep. covers. Yep. That's a Springfield paving bill. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, and I'm always happy to scan that stuff and send it to you. You know, if, if that's useful, just tell me and I'll, I'll do it. Um, maybe I should have done that given the, the, um, the amount anyway. Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. Okay. Um, other business, Sean at the uh, fire department is looking for a committee member, which I think in the past from the tenor of their discussion has been Louise Loring, to sit in on the discussion of what equipment to purchase. So it sounds to me like this is a group meeting that happens with all of the interested parties under Sean's um, leadership. Do we know when those meetings take place? There is um, a list that I can send to you. Well, is um, my, more specifically, is it in the evening or during the day? Oh, good question. Saturday, Sunday? Um, I think it was a list of... Uh, let me see if I can come up with that for you. It's a good question. Why didn't I anticipate it? The 
manager is looking to schedule a fire committee meeting soon. 5.30 p.m. seems to be the best time. We just need to narrow down a day. And then he has a whole list of suggestions. Um, one of them being today. Obviously, we didn't make that one. Tuesday, Thursday, next Monday, the 26th, 27th, 28th, Thursday. So if anyone is interested, I would forward this um, memo to you, but it looks like the time is 5.30 p.m. And I hope I hope you know Art Smith, our um, fire chief in Saxons River, who um, lives, I think, I'm not sure whether it's properly Vancor or Jed Circle. What about him? He's oh. the fire chief. He will be at this meeting also. Um, yeah, send it to me. I'll, I'll go. Okay, Ellen, are you interested in it as well? No, I just had I had a question because if you're talking about Sean McGinnis, the mm -hmm. Falls Fire Department. Yes. Yeah. Do they oversee all of this, or this is just an informal? The, uh, what what the um, all the equipment now is purchased through the town of Rockingham. So okay. we have town of Rockingham. Fire Department, we have Bells Falls Fire Department, the Saxons River Fire Department. Okay. So the trucks that are at the Saxons River uh, Fire Department are actually owned by the town of Rockingham. Oh, okay. Good to know. Thank you. You should see if you can get a, a fire station as part of the equipment on the list. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just one? Just... One will be good. Okay. Pleasant Street would like a nice a auxiliary one. one. <laughs> Maybe you could just like abbreviate it or like make up some kind of like alternative name and just get signed up. <laughs> so I should put this on the Saxon River Facebook page, but you can go on. There is a video of when we got the fire truck in the 60s. It was such a huge deal. And when Mr. Smith transformed from Mr. Smith, the janitor into Mr. Smith, the fire chief or oh. Smith senior. Nice. And it's, I believe my dad actually filmed it. So it was 16 meter, full lawn professional. And, you know, you see the truck coming up and all the kids at the school and it's very exciting. And, you know, it's, it was a huge deal when we got that, that fire truck. Oh, that's awesome. I'd love but, to see. Yeah. Huge. I'll put it on the side. I'll see if I can find it. Right. Okay. So Matt is going to serve. Thank you, Matt. That's great. Um, I will forward this email to you. Um, I, do you prefer Matt SRV or, um, your, the email you had been using prior to the Vermontel addresses. Are you checking both? Oh, send, it, send it to both. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, just a quick update on the paving. Um, I uh, talked to Andy Howarth uh, last week. He said, I know people are anxious and annoyed and uh, very concerned about the paving, but we can't pave when it rains. And right. these yeah. paving companies um, take on contracts and until they finish in Wellington, they can't come to Saxons River. So every day it rains, you know, they're waiting to finish. I believe they're here though. And Carl, you referred yeah. to that. So they have paved the short stretch of Hartley Hill Road um, from the, the corner there up to uh, Stickney's driveway. Um, and I talked to Andy today. Tomorrow they are going to start at the bridge and come up Westminster Street, go down West West Road to the town line and come back and hopefully pave that section tomorrow. Wow. Uh, and then they're going to go on to other streets and he didn't specify what the order would be. And the chip ceiling will be the first or second week of August. Okay. Um, one note to go with that. I noticed today going by the fire station that one of the Springfield paving trucks was parked on the side of the fire station, um, effectively taking up a spot for a responder. That the, Somebody should contact them and tell them to keep their equipment and vehicles um, away from the fire station. So is there a um, standard demarcation? It seems to me when the plant swap has been there, people have pointed to a specific pole and said you have to park beyond this pole. They should sure. be beyond that, that telephone pole, I think with all their equipment, but 
Yeah, he was right next to the fire department where I've seen many uh, a respond a first responder park to be able to get into the fire station very quickly. Okay, I'll write to Andy about that. Yeah, I was gonna say probably chain of command to Andy is the best. Well, I have your answer about the grand list as um because I'm cutting up checks. I'm not cutting up checks. Um I copied all the checks and I attached them to the um bills. Is um so when a house is sold, they update the grand list to a new assessed amount, a new assessed value. Okay. And there's been a fair amount of um property transfers. Uh, yeah. This, yeah, this year, in the past year. And I understand that the listers may make some other adjustments in the course of the year that affect it. Yes, I heard that as well. So, um, so anyway, I was I was working on the wrong data, so <laughs> we're going to be $170 short. You may have to dock my salary for it. <laughs> <laughs> I... I um, you know, I, I encourage everybody to make make the mistakes early, fess up right away, and <laughs> Ellen will create a, a wonderful manual for us going forward. So we'll make new mistakes next year. Um, but I, I think we're off on a, on a good start. And I, I certainly find it refreshing that other people can admit they haven't done things right. Um, I have no other business. How about you, Matt? Nope. Ellen? Nope. Rick? Nope. Carl? Nope. Sarah? Only, um, could I get those checks tomorrow, do you think? Yes. Oh, great. I will bring you the checks and the, uh, the warrant. warrant. Yep, and okay. everything. I'll sign it great. and I will uh, give you a call, but um, it'll be on your doorstep by 1030. Oh, perfect. Just, just for next time, can we... Make sure the password and link. I never have had to use a password. I don't know why I had so much trouble getting on. Fortunately, Ellen was here and her tech savviness outshined mine today. Yeah, usually I'm coming to you. <laughs> so that reminds me, are you two okay being the people at the fire station? For now. Yeah. Do you want to continue meeting by Zoom? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, Until the next time. What is our next meeting? Is it the first Monday in August? Typically, how is the how is the August meeting handled? Anybody know that? I think Early. it's usually the first uh, the first Monday, and then we de we decide to cancel the second meeting if there's nothing pressing. Okay, that sounds good. All right, Matt. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye.